Hello everyone, I hope all is well. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Justin with DKC Realty Group. We are covering episode six in the How to Buy a Home series. It's called Highest and Best. All right, so now in case you're wondering what highest and best means, if you're following from last week, it's a situation in which the seller has received multiple offers on their property. So they are now asking everyone to submit an offer with their highest price and their best terms. Okay. So that means anyone who submitted an offer already, they're asking for a second round and they're also asking anyone who might be interested in submitting an offer to submit their highest and best on their first shot. After they get all the offers that are highest and best, they'll sit down, review them, and they'll pick one to move forward with. This situation is happening a lot because we're still in a very strong seller's market. There's limited inventory and there are a lot of buyers. So there's a lot of competition on the buyer end. If you find yourself in this situation, well, this is the video for you. So we're going to be covering ways to make your offer more competitive. If you encounter a highest and best situation, when it comes to price, I know it's the sore spot for us. Talk to your real estate professional, talk to your lender. Typically when we're in a highest and best situation, I've been advising my clients to offer minimum a slightly above asking price could go a little higher. This is when you want to lean on your real estate professional. Like I said, I like to do a professional equity assessment report for my clients before we even see a home. So I already have a sense of what the market value is independent of what the seller is asking for. So this is a good time to pull out that tool to see if it might make sense to go a little bit or a lot of it above what the seller is asking for to make sure you have a great chance of getting the home that you want. Okay. But again, consult, consult, consult. Can't stress it enough with your real estate professional and your lender when it comes to price for your offer. Now terms, there are a bunch of different terms that come up in offers. We discussed many of them last week. But now let's talk about them in detail. Now, like you know, I said already for homes, I typically recommend people do an inspection. If you want to waive it to make your offer even more competitive so that you're telling the seller you're willing to go straight into contract without having the home inspected, that is completely up to you. But ask somebody first for a little guidance on that. Now, if you do want to have an inspection just for your own peace of mind when buying the house, you still have the option of taking the home as is. So remember, you're not going to be requesting any repairs and you're not going to be requesting any price reductions based off, based off the inspection. You're just inspecting the home to make sure you're comfortable buying it as it is and moving forward with the transaction. That's a great way to make your offer more competitive in a highest and best situation. And it doesn't necessarily cost you anything. Second is mortgage. Now, remember we were talking about different types of mortgages last week. It's up to you after consulting with your lender to see if you have the flexibility to switch which type of mortgage you're going to use. Typically conventional mortgages are the least restrictive. So sellers really like those. Talk to your lender first and consult with your real estate professional to see if it makes sense. But if you're able to change your mortgage to something less restrictive that can close faster, because a lot of times sellers want deals to close faster, it's going to benefit you to make in terms of making your offer more competitive. Down payment, another term you can alter. If you can increase your down payment, that gives the seller more confidence in your offer typically for a couple of reasons. One, if you have a higher down payment, you have more skin in the game for when you sign the contract. So the seller feels there's less of a chance that you'll try and voluntarily walk away from a transaction because you're going to be losing more money or have the possibility of losing more money. Second thing is a lot of sellers feel with a higher down payment that the buyer is just more financially qualified to purchase their home. So they're less worried about what could happen during the mortgage process. So if you have the ability to offer a higher down payment, it's a great way to increase the competitiveness of your offer. All right. Doesn't change the purchase price necessarily, but it means you're going to have a lower mortgage and you have more stability in the eyes of the sellers often in terms of your offer. Something we already touched on a fast closing time. So a lot of sellers want to sell as soon as they can. So if you can have a fast closing time, 30 days, 
maybe 45 days, as opposed to two months or two and a half, that can help give you an edge. That often ties into the type of financing that you're using. So conventional loans tend to be the fastest, but of course, check with your lender. And you wanna see what other steps you can take to help make sure everything goes as quickly as possible. How soon can you have an inspection done if you're doing one? How soon will your attorney review the contract and get it back to the sales attorney with all the proposed corrections? How quickly can you come in and sign the contract? How quickly are you gonna submit paperwork to the bank? Those are all things that you can help control to move the process along, but you generally, when you're making that offer, give an initial time frame. the less days for a lot of sellers, the better. They wanna close sooner. Of course, if they tell you that they need more time to close and that's what their agent has been telling your agent or they put in a public notice that they want three months before they close, then tell them you close in three months. That's better. If we don't know, we wanna assume faster is better, but if they're telling us specifically that they want more time and you're comfortable with it, make that a term in your offer that you'll give them the time that they need to pack up and move to the new location. Now we talked a lot of mortgage stuff already. We got another term we can use. It's called a conditional mortgage approval. So remember you got your pre-approval when we began the process. A lot of lenders can give you what's called a conditional mortgage approval. It's gonna make you more competitive in the eyes of sellers. Here's why. When you have that conditional mortgage approval, that means that the writer has already checked your file to make sure that at least most of the items they should be concerned about, you've already satisfied. It's gonna give the seller more confidence that you can close your loan and close it quickly, which we don't know. We wanna assume they wanna go ASAP. So if you have that as opposed to just the pre-approval, it helps your offer stand out a lot more. Another thing, your lender can jump in and assist with assuaging any concerns that the seller or their agent may have regarding the financing of your offer. So check to see if your lender is willing to call the seller's agent and answer any particular questions they may have about your specific offer and your financing. The less fears and concerns they have, the more secure they feel, the more likely they wanna move forward with your transaction over someone else's. Another thing you can do to humanize your offer a little bit more is provide a letter or a video along with it. If the seller gets a chance to review it, maybe they see the type of person you are, get a sense of it, and it makes them feel more comfortable with giving their precious home to you, right? So that helps increase the competitiveness of your offer as well, because we got a little heart coming with the offer attached to it. Last term we'll talk about, because there's a whole bunch that I don't wanna bore you to death, but this is a big one called the appraisal contingency. So a lot of times you'll have an appraisal contingency in your offer or in the contract to sale. It's basically saying if the home does not appraise for the purchase price, you the buyer do not have to move forward with the transaction. So let me give an example. Let's say that you're offering $650,000 for that single family home. It comes time for the appraisal. It only appraises for $625,000. There's a $25,000 gap you have that appraisal contingency clause, you don't have to close that gap. You can see if you can negotiate with the seller, but you're not at risk of losing your down payment in this instance. If you, if you both sides can't come to an agreement, you can walk away from the transaction and recoup your down payment. Now, of course, talk to your lender and talk to your attorney and talk to your real estate professional. But if you feel that the home is worth a certain amount and you're willing to pay a little extra than it might appraise for and you have the cash on hand, the numbers work, you're comfortable with it, you might be comfortable dropping the appraisal contingency clause from your offer. You won't have it in the contract to sale. If the house appraises for less than what you agreed to buy it for, you're gonna be responsible for closing that gap. There's also variations of this where people will say if it appraises for $20,000 less than the purchase price, I'll close the gap, but if it's $25,000, that's a bridge too far for me. You wanna see what you're comfortable with to help make your offer more competitive, it's completely up to you. But I just want to let you know ways that you can make your offer stand out when there's so many in a very competitive market. All right? so this was episode six, highest and best. Next week, episode seven, 
inspection time. I know we've been waiting for it. It's finally here. In the meantime, you can check out more videos. They're popping up right over here. You can subscribe to this channel, three educational real estate videos every week, plus some bonus content when we got the time to throw it in. And you can follow me across the socials. The hashtag is JSBXHomes. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next week.